All right, so hi there. In this lecture, I will focus on photons. Uh, we will discuss the photon interaction experiments and theories important in establishing the particle nature of light. This is part of the duality nature of light. Let's start. In this lecture, I will discuss first photons, followed by its interaction that includes photoelectric effect, Compton effect, pair production and annihilation. Then last is the absorption of photons within a material. It includes the discussion of linear attenuation coefficient. Around 1900s, hot bodies were used to study the radiation emitted by it. We know that, uh, when, for example, we have a heated substance. It radiates energy. In classical theory, it is predicted that radiation intensity will increase continuously at shorter wavelengths, as shown in this classical theory uh, graph. This is based on Rayleigh genes. However, it was observed, as shown in still in this graph, that the curve started dropping in intensity or spectral regions. It started around 400 nanometers, called the ultraviolet catastrophe. And uh, Max Planck, was able to do the theoretical framework of this uh, experimental data using an assumption that for a radiation with frequency f and wavelength lambda, it is emitted only in discrete packets called photons. And this is the postulate of Planck. The energy of your photon is equal to hf, where in h is your uh, Planck's constant, F is the frequency, but we can rewrite your frequency in terms of nu, as shown in this one. So we will use this notation for our frequency. Or this is equal to hc over lambda. In terms of intensity for the block body radiation, this is expressed using this equation. Electromagnetic radiation is made out of particle-like discrete bundles of energy called the photons. Each of these photons has an energy E that depends only on the frequency or the wavelength of the photon. And we have this Planck's constant here, h, and this is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules second. Now, according to the theory of relativity, photons should have zero rest mass given that it travels at the speed of light c. Thus, Using the momentum energy relation, it will be simplified to E is equal to PC, where in T is the momentum, C the speed of light. Therefore, we can express the momentum as follows, which is equal to H, your Planck's constant, over lambda, the wavelength. If we have a monoenergetic beam, the intensity I is proportional to the number of photons crossing a certain given area uh, per unit time. Note that we have the following useful expression also in terms of uh, calculation. We have this experiment wherein a light shines on a given metal surface and uh, placed inside an evacuated tube. During the process, electrons are emitted from this metal surface. Thus, if we apply a potential across this anode A or the collector and cathode C, the emitter, a photocurrent will be detected by our ammeter if the anode is positive and the cathode is negative. When we reverse the voltage source, the polarity of our voltage source as shown in this illustration, the anode will be negative and the cathode will be positive. If we increase this reverse applied voltage, it will eventually stop the current flow. Note that the electrons must have a K or kinetic energy greater or equal to the electrical potential energy uh, to reach the collector. This is the stopping voltage, uh, which is measured as a function of the wavelength of light. So if we have a certain V nut here, which refers to the potential applied to our anode cathode system, and E times V naught is equal to E max, wherein E max here is the maximum energy of the electrons emitted from our anode 
So thus, uh, we will describe V0 here as the stopping potential or stopping voltage. So we have this uh, experimental results. Let's start with this first graph here. It shows that uh, current begins almost instantaneously, uh, even for a light of very low intensity. The delay between uh, when the incident light uh, strikes a certain metal surface and when the electrons are observed is of the order of 10 to the negative 9 seconds, as shown here in the time uh, part of our graph. And this is independent of the intensity. So next, uh, when our frequency, the light frequency eh, nu or f, and the retarding potential are, are fixed, the current is said to be proportional to the intensity of our incident light. So next for our experimental results, when the frequency and the light intensity are constant, the current uh, decreases as the retarding voltage is increased, reaching zero cur current for a given voltage or potential. This potential here is called your stopping potential or stopping voltage. And this stopping voltage V0 is independent of the intensity. Next result is this. For a given emitter material, the stopping voltage varies linearly with frequency according to this equation. And the value of the constant term phi here, or the work function, varies from a specific type of materials. And the slope of this graph is h, which remains the same for all types of material because this is equal to the Planck's constant. Okay, so still uh, on the photoelectric effect discussion, we have the following important equations. Uh, the electrons will be ejected with various kinetic energies ranging from zero to a maximum value given by first uh, the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted electron. And this is equal to the energy carried by your photon, H nu, minus phi, the binding energy of the least tightly bound electron. And uh, we have this phi, the work function, and this can be expressed as E W naught and uh, we can also equate this one to h nu, wherein we have this nu sub th here, which is the threshold frequency. Below this threshold frequency, those incident or incoming photons will not have sufficient energy to release even the least tightly bound electrons, no, mat no matter how intense that light is. Another experiment in 1923 by Arthur Compton confirms this particle nature of light through scattering of x-rays. Given that photons, speed is equal to the speed of light in a vacuum. So thus, uh, the rest mass is zero. We can uh, get this uh, momentum expression as I have shown previously. For Compton scattering, we have this scenario. Uh, when an incoming photon with an initial energy and momentum is scattered as it interacts with an electron at rest, the process is like elastic collision, wherein it results to a scattered photon with this scattering angle theta with this energy and momentum. And of course, we have uh, this electron with this energy and momentum as well. And both of uh, the energy and momentum are conserved, resulting in an increase in wavelength for the scattered X-rays. Using the geometrical configuration we have defined for Compton scattering, we have this expression. This is the expression for the change in wavelength as a function of the scattered photon angle uh, theta and a constant, which is your Compton wavelength with this value. Next, photon interaction is pair production. The energy carried by a photon is completely converted into matter. This will create an electron-positron pair. Note that the positron is just an identical particle with an electron except for its charge. Initially, the system has zero charge and therefore, two oppositely uh, charged particles must be created in line with the conservation of charge. To produce this pair of particles, 
incoming photon as shown here must have an energy at least equal to the rest energy of the pair which is about 1.02 mega electron volts the excess photon energy will become the kinetic energy of the particles this cannot occur in empty space so that's why we have this uh, heavy nucleus here the nucleus will have a negligible uh, recoil kinetic energy due to its large mass by conservation of energy alone we have this uh, equation ignoring the heavy nucleus. On the other hand, we have pair production for positron electron pair results in creating two or more photons. Uh, to conserve both the energy and momentum, we need at least two photons. This can take place in empty space. For pair annihilation, by the conservation of energy and momentum, we have these two expressions. The k vector for the momentum here refers to the photon's propagation vector as defined below. Let us have this scenario wherein an incoming photon has this initial energy I0 incident to an absorber described by the linear attenuation or absorption coefficient for its specific type of material and photon energy. And last, uh, we have here the attenuated intensity I. The intensity of the beam will be reduced as it passes through a material due to the combination of photoelectric effect, Compton effect, and pair production. The equation follows the exponential attenuation law as shown, wherein x here is the thickness of the material. Okay, the main attenuation effects or the attenuation coefficient of electromagnetic radiation depends on energy and the atomic number of the material. Shown here are the area where the three types of photon interactions dominate. Photoelectric effect in this area Compton effect dominates here, and for the higher energy, we have the pair production. Hi! If you have learned something in this video and you like my content, please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, JP Academy. See you in the next video.